Well, Venezuela continued its narrative. You would have heard Vice President Rodriguez, who was addressed to the court, was more fit for a political platform than a courtroom. It's a dialogue that they have constructed very carefully and over a long period of time, so it flows. It's a dialogue that is completely biased, completely prejudicial, and interpersed with nationalistic and patriotic fervor, directed obviously to the population of Venezuela. And that has been their narrative from the inception. From the time they began to assert illegality of this arbitral award, since 1962, innumerable occasions would have been presented to them to produce the evidence, evidence of quality and credibility that would cast the type of aspersions that they would like to cast on the arbitral award, and they have abysmally failed to do so. Here, they have been delaying in filing their memorial in the substantive case, and now they are proceeding with this referendum, and we are trying to get some sort of protection from the court, and you heard their response. They have completely misinterpreted, and I believe deliberately so, what we are seeking here. We are not seeking to stop a legitimate constitutional internal process of a sovereign nation. That's not what we are doing. Their entire presentation was directed on that, that we are trying to stop Venezuela and the people of Venezuela from expressing their democratic right to participate in a constitutional process authorized by their constitution and authorized by their legal process and democratic procedures. Not at all, we are not doing that. All we are saying is that you cannot use your internal constitutional mechanism to ask, to ask questions or to demand actions that are going to interfere with the territorial sovereignty of our country and will interfere with issues that are directly for the consideration and determination of this court. So we are asking to rephrase the questions, ask questions that will not undermine and subvert not only the legal process, but will interfere with our territorial rights and our territorial sovereignty. We are asking also that, assuming that the court says, well, we can't permit them, we can't prohibit them, at least the court must say something about their ability to enforce those um, referendum questions. Because the enforcement of those referendum questions will involve an annexure, invasion, and occupation of territory that is lawfully Guyana's and territory that is the subject of the court proceedings. And every court must have a jurisdiction to protect its process, the integrity of proceedings before it, and to protect itself from abuse, from actions that will be inimical and that are inconsistent with the court's process and the issues that are before the court. I know you've, you've come here to ask for provisional measures, but uh, clearly Rodriguez said today and others um, that they don't respect this court or its jurisdiction. What then of, of a potential ruling in Guyana's favor? What effect would it have? Well, that's quite an unfortunate statement that will have its own ramifications, and those are consequences that will have to be pursued at the international level. Um, all countries that signed on to the UN Charter, Venezuela is one of them, are bound to accept the processes of the UN. This court is the principal judicial organ of the United Nations. If we are speaking about living in a world of peace, living in a world governed by the rule of law, then one has to, countries have to submit themselves despite the fact that you are a sovereign nation. The United Nations were, was formed where everyone agreed to some extent to submit themselves to the organs, processes, and charter 
of the United Nations. Now, if Venezuela wants to travel the road of being a rogue nation, well, there are sanctions that will have to flow. And we will have to continue to prosecute, prosecute our case internationally and at, and at those um, international fora and seek enforcement support from um, those international organizations. I don't believe that the world will sit idly by and allow um, a participant in a court proceedings at this level to, when they lose, to disregard and disrespect the court process. The fact that they have submitted themselves, though unwillingly, um, I believe make them to be bound by the processes and decisions of the court. Uh, not because a court rules against you, um, uh, that, that you, 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 you disregard the court's process. Countries come to this court every day. Is it fair to the over 170 something countries that have already invoked this court's jurisdiction? And a court case of this type or, or of any type or most types, you have a winner and a loser. So countries for the last 100 years have been submitting themselves to this, this jurisdiction. And some of them lose. They accept their loss out of committee, out of international peace, out of international rule of law, and by international law, one expects Venezuela to follow suit. Well, I'm hoping that we will get orders here that would impact what will happen um, um, after the referendum takes place. So I, I, I would not want to speak speculatively at this point in time, but I'm hoping that the court um, will make some ruling before the referendum takes place. And that would put me in a position then to answer questions going forward. We are asking for the referendum not to be proceed in the language in which it is expressed. Okay. We are not stopping the referendum. A country is free to hold a referendum. Countries are, are democratically entitled to consult with their citizens on matters of national importance. This is certainly a national importance for the people of Guyana as well as Venezuela. So Venezuela is, is in order to have a referendum, I suppose, on this question and many other questions, but not in the manner in which it proposes to do um, it, regarding the, the, the way the questions are, are structured. You can't have a referendum to consult in your country that will require the public support for you to invade and annex my country. At what level of, 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 of rationality does that make sense? And that's what the referendum seeks to do.